Hi, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be tasting some beers that Sarah acquired as part of her trip to Rhinebeck uh, a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, if you haven't already, please do check out part one and part two of those videos. You can check them out probably below, but click up here for videos. And uh, then come back if you want to put us on pause. That's okay. But today we're going to be testing, tasting some of those beers that Sarah picked up and talking a little bit about them. So Sarah, tell me a little bit about uh, what, why you chose these beers. Well, um, as Rick mentioned, I recently went to Rhinebeck, New York for the big uh, Sheep and Wool Festival that they have out there. And that's what part one and two of the videos are about. So if you're interested in more of that event, um, I go into a lot more detail. But of course, being away from home and just, you know, being thankful that there was someone here to hold down the fort, I wanted to bring back a little thank you and a little souvenir for Rick. Um, and I didn't have a big yarn chopping list, so I wasn't going to bring back, you know, a sweater quantity or something and then another jumper. So, <laughs> so it was beer. Um, so yeah, so I got a few beers. Um, one was on a detour on the way home. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the first one we're going to taste is one that I had at a restaurant in Kingston, New York. It's called Boytson's. And it's kind of a supper club lounge, um, kind of had a speakeasy feel. I really wish you had been there because it's a great place for a date. Um, but anyway, I had this Flower Power by Ithaca Brewing Company. Remember, the label's upside down on the bottles for some reason. Oh, that's right. That's weird. <laughs> they put yeah. them on upside down. This so batch, you can show it on that This six-pack six pack has, the, has the labels on upside down, but that's what it's supposed to look like. So Flower Power. So, And I had asked um, for a local beer, I think, Probably 90% of their beer selection on their menu was local. So that was great. Um, bartender was really good, very knowledgeable. Asked her, I figured from the name it was probably a floral hop. And she confirmed that before I ordered. And uh, I enjoyed it. So full disclosure, this um, is one we both tasted now. We, we did break into the six pack that I brought home. So we both had a bit before. Sarah's right, it has a very floral, bright nose. Mm -hmm. Almost has a, a Saison um, type of uh, yeast profile. Oh, it. it does. I have a little funk, and I hadn't picked up on that before. Mm -hmm. And because that always triggers like an apple y response in my brain, I think that smell. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So Again. But yeah, nice floral taste, I'd say. Yeah, floral hops. Mm -hmm. um, Again, very bright, a hint of some kind of citrusy thing, but not like in a New England IPA style. No. Very, very delicious. Um, malty, considering. I don't perfume. think it's very that big, but it still has a nice malty back uh, body to it. Uh, I think it's a seven or so percent, okay, actually. so that may be why. Let me look real quick. Yeah. So there's a funny story about my acquisition of this beer. Um, I had it at the restaurant, like I mentioned, and then I had some time to kill between dinner and going to the Jill Draper open house, open studio event that I was going to later that night. And I thought, oh, I'll swing by a beer store and get some of this. It's so good. Um, and I asked the bartender, I said, is there you know, a beer store around here that I can go to? I wasn't sure of New York's liquor laws and, you know, can you get it in grocery stores? Can you get it here or there? She said, oh, yeah, there's a place called um, Beer World up, up the road. Um, you know, just, just put it in your GPS, you'll get there. It's, you know, five minute drive. So great. Hopped in the car, typed beer, beer world into my map thing. And it's like 20 minute drive, this direction, I'm going 20 minute drive. Okay. Either she's terrible directions or it's like a bad sense of where things are, or this is not the right thing. Oh, well, I'll just go to my event. So I typed in the directions for my event, started out on the road. And then saw wine and liquor, big sign for shop. Mm -hmm. Pulled over, thought, okay, even if they don't have beer, they might know where to get some. Walked in, the guy was really nice. He's like, yeah, we don't have beer here, but there's Beer Universe right over here. So I was like, oh, okay. So I hopped back in the car, typed that into my GPS. Sure enough, that was like three quarters of a mile away. Uh... <laughs> so Beer Universe for the win. Then I got to the parking lot, and I saw a guy coming out, and he had two... 12 packs of this beer mm -hmm. and got in his car. I was like, oh, great. I'm going in for that. So I go in, say hi to the shop owner. And I said, hey, I'm looking for the Flower Power by Ithaca Brewing Company. He goes, middle shelf, second aisle. I'm like, all right. And he didn't want to get off his post. I guess he was, you know, he's there. So I'm like, look in, look in the shelves, look in the shelves. Can't find it. I'm like, are you sure it's here? I'm thinking to myself, that guy took the last of it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
so finally I found the last six pack on the shelf. Wow. <laughs> so I did hey. manage to score a little bit, but yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. It is a very nice beer. Oh, a little bit of honey almost too. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm. At the kind of the second taste, like not the initial thing that lands on your palate, but as you start to roll around your mouth and swallow a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then it has a nice bitter finish. And almost like the floral, maybe it's maybe I'm associating some of the floral with a little bit of honey as well. Mm -hmm. But there is a little honey on the nose, a little spice, a lot of flowers, and it's got a nice bitter profile. But it's a little hint of sweet, yeah. probably from the malt. It's like sweet and then mm -hmm. bitter. It kind of goes up and down with each sip. That's an excellent beer. And I like that because it kind mm -hmm. of like if you were having this with a meal, that would get you ready to take the next bite. Or if you have if you're eating something really fatty. That bitterness would cleanse your palate really well. True. But yeah. this this beer is great on its own. It's good. Very good. All right. Well, before I finish the whole thing, let's uh, step <laughs> into a couple of these other the beers. Okay. We'll finish them later. Don't worry. <laughs> no beer left behind. All right. So now it's interesting. Now I'm going to be flying blind on these. Sarah, I don't know if she had any of these beers, but you stopped by this particular unusual establishment. And again, Sarah mentions this in part two of the Ryan Beck videos, but I'm going to ask her to uh, talk about it again while I pour. Yep. So this is from a little tiny nano brewery called the Beer Diviner. And the vibe in the place is kind of a rustic country cabin. Um, we found, Kristen, my travel buddy, and I found this place just on a whim. We were driving down the road and we just saw a little hand-painted sign that said beer and an arrow. So we're like, oh, we, we got to check it out. Um, so you go in and it's really small. There's maybe a, like a two top in the corner and then four or five seats at the bar. And it feels like being in, in a, a private home, like some guy's man cave or clubhouse or whatever. Um, but the proprietor, John, is very nice and um, he is licensed to sell beer. It's not like some <laughs> off license thing. Um, and yeah. It's, so this it's what tasty. we're oh sorry didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, uh, I liked these. So, but you haven't. Oh, had them okay. So this yeah. is me. I'm going to be completely blind. I haven't mm -hmm. tried these. Sarah has tried them. This first one is called uh, Double Diabla, and it's a Citra Double Dry Hopped India Pale Ale that is eight percent ABV, mm -hmm. and it's got a lovely yellowy profile there. That's clear. Kind of dark. What is orange? Is the last one? It's Here's a little a, more. Just like, See, that's a little less like hazy. Pale, pale ale. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about color. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So you got your pale ale, and you got your double IPA. Anyway. Hmm. So anyway, I haven't tried this. Oh, citra right up front. Mm -hmm. Very uh, orange juice, hints of from pineapple. I was surprised this didn't have more haze and like chunks in like a New England style would. Mm -hmm. I guess he filters his beer. Now, that's deceptively thinner body for an 8% mm -hmm. than um, the others. Almost hints of cherry on the finish. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yep. I liked it. Mm. It was, in some ways, reminded me of other New England IPAs we like, like the Alchemist IPAs or the mm -hmm. um, Sip of Sunshine. You know, it's got the sweet hoppy fruity up front and then it goes into more of a malty mm -hmm. um, bitterness in the middle. But this is not a hot bomb by any uh, means. This is a very balanced, mm -hmm. very uh, very balanced, very like easy to drink. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. I mean, he had a whole bunch of different styles. We'll taste one more of his um, in just a second. So, and I was gravitating to some of the weirder stuff that he had, but then I thought, you know, double IPA. I mean, you can't go wrong, and Rick likes it, likes a good hoppy beer. So, since I was shopping for you, I keep in mind. Thank you. Well, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to continue to enjoy that. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the bubbles. It's the bubbles. Sure, playing the bubbles. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to try the mystical ale. Mm -hmm. The Beer Diviner. And this one's 9% ABV. This one, this is a Gruet. Yes. And this is the first one I tried because you can't find Gruet very many places. So for those of you who don't know, Gruet is beer made without hops. And so back before hops were kind of discovered for their preservation uh, properties and their flavoring properties, 
people would make beer with other kinds of herbs and uh, that's what this is an example of so I tried it and I've had I've had gruits that taste like dishwater I've had gruits that tasted really good I've had gruits that reminded me very much like you couldn't tell that there was no hops because of the the herb profile that they use seemed to mimic hops pretty well mm -hmm. um, well, let's see what you think of this. Yeah, I'm going to say I haven't looked at the labels. I have no idea what to expect with this. Again, the little Saison funk on the Yeah, I, I expect that from a Gruet to usually get that sour kind of uh, taste because I'm um, not that this is the case for all of them, but wild fermentation is not an unusual thing with a Gruet as well. Oh, and I don't think he wild ferments. I think he does use a yeast. Yeah, it's not surprising. Because it's not sour. Wow. That is interesting. That is sharp. It's very bitter. Very bitter. Yeah, I liked it because... But it finishes almost it like you have a nice mouthful clean. of flowers, though. Mm -hmm. um, whoa, it coats the mouth. Really? That's, I mean, I think it's, it has a nice, clean, very dry finish. It's almost like a very dry champagne or something, but it has even more bitterness to it, too. See, I just find this... Um, it is just overwhelmingly coating the entire mouth. My tongue is, mm. even after I've finished the taste, there's very peppery, spicy. It, it's yeah, still my there. tongue's kind of numb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a numbness. It's very to it. herbal, and I didn't wow. pay attention. Does it say what, what herbs he uses? Well, I'm curious about that. Let's see. Um, I'm reading really mm. quickly, and contains, uh, contains, Contains carefully chosen, highest quality ingredients, hand bottled in condition, but it does not seem to mention which ones. Wor oh, wait a minute. Wormwood, mm -hmm. grains of paradise, hand picked wild yarrow, mm -hmm. and ale, and just that's it. So that may be the ones. Oh. So the wormwood yeah. and the yarrow, I think, would probably give it a better yeah, taste that, as well. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. wormwood is the. Um, now, that's a different wormwood than. Um, Olden days wormwoods to the absinthe. Right, no, wormwood, wormwood is an herb, not the, mm -hmm. not the rotten uh, alcohol. Wow, mm -hmm. that's um, I can see this going very well and paired with a meal because it almost needs something to cut it. Yeah, it's pretty strong. The bitter aftertaste really lingers. Um, I quite like it, but I could I could see somebody tasting this and just going, it's too bitter." Yeah, I'm um, <laughs> I'm interested in seeing what it does when it, it. Yeah. when it warms up a bit. Mm -hmm. I am curious to see what that changes because it is really in your face, <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I'm um I'm on the fence about this. I always like I a good gruit. I think it's getting more bitter as it's getting warmer. I would say because when I first tasted this when we went there. It was ice cold out of his tap. Uh-huh. And it, it was bitter. But then I quickly moved on to other tastings, and I didn't feel like it was hanging around so much. So maybe it's because I only had a small sample there because mm -hmm. I was driving or whatever. But anyway. Well, I'm gonna I quite like it, but I agree with you. It's very, it's quite an acquired taste, and it probably would do well with the meal. Well, I'm going to save what's left of it for our meal this evening. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah's mother, and Nancy, made us a casserole. I think it's a mushroom and broccoli casserole. I yeah. think this would stand up it's well. It's kind of heavy, that. heavy cheese, lots of noodles. And exactly. Stuff, so yeah, yeah. I think this will help cut mm -hmm. through that. So I'm going to probably do is keep this aside for that purpose. It is certainly not an everyday drinking beer, and it's certainly <laughs> it's in a, a bomber, but it could have certainly been in a pint class. <laughs> not a nine percent, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to yeah. say it. It's definitely an acquired taste, and it's uh, it's. Mm -hmm. I always like to try new beers, and this is one of those beers which I would. I'm glad we tried. I would not try to recreate create. Oh, the bubbles. <laughs> um, Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't want to have to deal with five gallons of this, right? Unless you were having like a group party and everybody was going to take them home. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or if you're going to do barrel or something like that, that'd be interesting. Um, but oh, you yeah, could soften it up with some. Soften it up with some whiskey. I was about to say. I told you how bitter it is. <laughs> All right. Now, now that that uh, it's almost got a woody flavor at the end. If you mm -hmm. really let it finish. Oh yeah. It's like um, oaky or astringent. Yep. Astringent, but yeah, it does. It has that, you know, if you've ever held a piece of wood in your mouth. <laughs> do you do that often? <laughs> no. Not like a pencil or something. <laughs> lick, yeah, like a pencil, like lick the furniture. No, not usually, but I have had occasion. I don't know, woodworking something, you need an extra hand, you just prop it right there and you've got that like woody aftertaste. Fair enough. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've got that chewed on like birch wood and things mm. to get that kind of birch beer type of flavor to it. Okay. It. Um, I can't say that I've uh, chewed on. <laughs> it's wood not a regular often. habit of mine. Okay, just to clarify. <laughs> Oh, there goes there again. Beaver and Wage. <laughs> Don't make Rick spit out of his beer. No, no. Uh -oh. You want to keep your, your computer in working order. Mm -hmm. Anyway, wow. That's um excellent, different. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. I, you know, hey, more power to the people who are going to be making and trying different types of beer and being creative in their styles. Right. You know, this is the safe bet right now. When you get your double mm -hmm. IPAs, people are enjoying that. Right. But you know what? Uh, having something on the menu that nobody else does, and you really are going to be hard pressed to find a Gruet in yeah. any place, large or small. Yeah. Um, and I last think, one we had, I think, was when we went to. Oh, that was one we liked. The one when we went to our um, our getaway. Oh golly, it wasn't Newburyport. Where was it? Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah we'll link we it in the show notes. We did there. have a Gruet there. Yeah. I don't think we could take it home, though, or something. It wasn't packaged. We got to try it, but we didn't bring any back. Well, we decided that we went back the next day and got something else completely because we just wanted something that was going to be a little bit more portable. And again, hops right. do add a level of preservative to something. Right. So if you're traveling, especially when you go to a place that has growlers, uh, they don't normally want to serve you something if you're going to be driving for a period of time. It doesn't usually bode well for them, and it could reflect poorly. Are you talking poorly. about Earth Eagle Brewing? Yes. Okay, Earth Eagle Brewing. Yeah, they did have a Gruet. Yeah. Those theirs were sour though. I think that's why I didn't get one because I like I like about that much of sour beer per month, and that's mm -hmm. that's all I really can drink. Um, right. I find it kind of overpowering. Huh. So I wouldn't I wouldn't buy a big bottle or or get a you know half gallon of Mm -hmm. of sour beer to take home as a general rule. Um, but what you were saying, though, about being able to experiment and stuff, that's the thing, is this guy's, like, really mm -hmm. small time. I think it's just him. And he seems to just make what he's in the mood to make. And if people buy it, fine. And if not, you know, maybe he gives it away to his friends or something or just drinks it himself. Oh, I'm sure there's a market so, for it. And certainly it's – it's. I'm, yeah. I'm just glad that you do. It's, you know, every one, every one of these small, especially nano, and this is definitely mm -hmm. a nano brewery, generally has something that they want to do that's you know a little bit not off the beaten path again just I mean, almost right. literally with this place right. but and he did the beer diviner did have more kind of middle of the road beers like he had another pale ale he had an amber ale you know he had a couple of other things he had a stout um so they weren't all out there crazy beers but no yeah no but again more power to him. I am mm -hmm. curious about how this is going to pair. Um, I'm glad you picked it up. Good. It maybe sound like I'm hesitant, but it's just it is really different. And it is. That's why. And I don't think everybody would like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very well executed thing. But it, like me with sour beer, if you don't like that thing, you're not going to like it. So if you don't like really bitter beer, well, and that's one of the things that we always say to friends and other people who. I don't like beer. Well, mm. you can't say that you don't like beer because there are so many different types of beer. There's going to be beers that have a champagne taste and it's the beers that are dark and beers that are dry and beers that are hoppy and not. Most people just, you know, they can, can probably find something they like. And if they don't like hops, they may like this or they may like a sour or they may like that. But mm -hmm. yes, glad that there are people taking chances with Gruets. Yes. Agreed. Cheers. Well, on that note, I'm going to drink this other beer. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna... Cheers. Thank you for I joining like me. It. Was it warming up more? Oh, yeah. you're quite welcome. And thank you guys for joining us. Um, we will be back again at some point. Um, we do have a couple of plans to brew. So hopefully in the next two months, we will have one or two brews, uh, brew days to share with you. In the meantime, I do have a recipe in the works and I also have a couple of interviews uh, booked. So um, I'll have a little variety on the channel. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and put the, click the notify button in the upper corner um, to get notifications when we have new videos. And thanks to all of the new subscribers who have joined us, possibly on the back of the Rhinebeck videos. We welcome you and glad mm -hmm. you're here. Please do leave any comments or questions uh, below, and we'll get back to you. Thanks yep. again for watching. Thanks again. Cheers, babe. Cheers.